Typically, when you overclock a discrete graphics card, the max you can get out of it varies from 1 to 5%. Some GPUs may go even higher if you can do everything right, that includes increasing the voltage, providing your GPU with ample airflow, and even overclocking your CPU simultaneously. The performance is still unlikely to go beyond 10% for most systems. However, iGPUs on Ryzen 7000 CPUs are way better than you could think of when it comes to overclocking. Here I am talking about the desktop Ryzen 7000 CPUs that feature the RDNA 2 based iGPU. If you remember AMD did not allow overclocking the iGPU on Ryzen 7000 when they were launched but now it is possible to tweak the iGPU frequencies whether it is the core or memory clock speeds. This is what a YouTuber named Scatterbencher just showed with the Ryzen 9 7900 featuring two GPU cores of RDNA 2 iGPU. In the test he explains all the settings he did before benchmarking the iGPU and then later compares the results after overclocking. Everything was first benchmarked on the stock settings with PBO disabled as it controls the clock speeds of both CPU and iGPU automatically. As you can see the chart shows the performance numbers in various applications like Geekbench for Mark, Handbrake etc as well as in three different games. Of course due to being a low profile iGPU with only two GPU cores it could not provide playable frame rates except for CSGO where it hardly touches 60 FPS. One more thing to note is that the iGPU refuses to even start start in simple ray tracing test because it is too weak. However, after overclocking things started changing quickly. Long story short, he managed to overclock the iGPU core frequency from 2.2 to 3.1 GHz with the help of increasing the voltage from around 1V to 1.39V. This did result in a temperature rise from 38 to 53 degrees Celsius but the gain was impressive with up to 42% performance uplift in Tomb Raider. This gain was pretty uniform in most tests except for a few and it also helped the iGPU to finally run the ray tracing benchmark. The one thing that looks odd is how the graph represents the performance gain because instead of choosing the starting point as 0, Scatterbencher chooses 90% as the base point which is making the 40% performance increase look like 300%. This is similar to what we saw in the recent RTX 4070 benchmark against the 3070 laptop GPU but still it's quite amazing to see that such gains are possible on a Ryzen 7000 CPU. Now there are a few things to note here. Number one is that the games are still not playable. With just a 4 to 5 FPS increase in frame rates, it won't make gaming possible on this iGPU except if you decide to play very casual or decade old titles. Number two is that not only the temperature rose quite significantly but the power consumption also increased by up to 60%. And number three, the system used very powerful components that included a high-end B650 motherboard from Gigabyte that featured an 18-core VRM with insanely good current support and also used a very powerful cooling solution which here was a 360mm custom loop from EK. Nevertheless, it looks more fun to overclock an iGPU than a discrete graphics card because I don't think there is any GPU on the planet that can provide so much performance boost. You can also watch the whole video on Scatterbenchers channel if you want to know everything in detail. I will provide the link to the video in the description. Now talking about GPUs, both AMD and Intel are planning to launch new graphics cards. Well, even though these GPUs won't be coming soon, we know how much the current GPU market lacks when it comes to budget and mid-range options. If we talk about AMD then, according to my drivers, AMD is planning to launch 5 more graphics cards that will include some mid-range to high-end options like the 7600, 7700 and the 7800 GPUs. As you can see that AMD has listed 7 different GPU boards on RRA where the 702 and 704 are already launched which we know as the 7900 XTX and the XT respectively. So we have a few more left that are likely going to be some mid-range options and it is said that these are going to be priced better than the Nvidia mid-range RTX 40 series cards. Here one more thing to note is that the 7th GPU which is the 701 looks like the flagship RX 7000 graphics card. I don't know if AMD has any plans to release a GPU even faster than the 7900 XTX but if there is one then it should be the 701 which is most likely to be the 7950 XTX and the 703 should be the 7950 XT. On the other hand Intel has also confirmed their next gen battle made GPUs that are going to succeed the Arc Alchemist graphics cards. Intel graphics spokesperson Tom Peterson talked about their upcoming Arc battle mage lineup in a podcast with PC World where he said that their design teams on architecture and software are currently working on battle mage GPUs and the progress is accelerating quickly. These GPUs will bring some more cool technologies which Tom didn't want to disclose 
but he said that the new GPUs will address the architectural issues Alchemist GPUs are struggling with. Moreover, Battle Mage will have better scaling on DirectX 12 and even better ray tracing. While he did not comment on the release dates for Battle Mage, we know that it is going to launch the next year, most probably in the first quarter. Let me know if you guys are excited about these mid-range GPUs and what are your expected prices. You can watch more of my videos here and subscribe if you want to keep up with the latest PC hardware stories like this. You can also follow me on Twitter, the link is in the description and I will see you next time.